I study philosophy of biology precisely because I love philosophy. Um, think that it's something that's useful to everybody, something that everybody really could benefit from studying at least a little bit. But I'm also selfish enough that I just didn't want to give up my interest in dinosaurs, and this was the best and easiest way to do that. My name is Leonard Finkelman. I am an assistant professor of philosophy here at Linfield College. I have taught Fundamentals of Philosophy, our introductory course, Logic, Philosophy of Science, and in the fall I'll be offering a course studying philosophy of science from Aristotle through Darwin. I would say that the first thing that I really wish everybody would know about dinosaurs and the philosophy related to them is that birds are dinosaurs. This was a fact that I first learned in a philosophy course when I was in college that was actually taught in part by a biologist at the University of Virginia named Doug Taylor who at one point indicated that birds are dinosaurs precisely because if you examine some famous dinosaurs, some uncontroversial dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops, for example, and consider what they must have in common that makes them dinosaurs, there's really no answer that you can come up with that wouldn't also describe birds in some way. And the really interesting thing about that is that it's not so much a matter of examining the animals themselves or collecting facts about the animals, but rather um, how you put together facts about those animals to derive some conclusion about them, which is what makes this a philosophical matter. That is to say that it's not enough just to look at the facts themselves, but you have to put them together in special ways to derive new information. So birds are dinosaurs, and that's why, because of philosophy. The second thing would be that philosophy has broader application in, in precisely that way. Um, there's been a ton of controversy in, in the past few years especially, mostly coming from some famous scientists who I'll not name on camera, um, who suggest that there's no room for philosophy anymore. But the truth is that there are a number of questions that, that we're all interested in that, quite frankly, the facts are never going to be enough to answer those questions. Nevertheless, those questions have correct or incorrect answers. Something like, um, are dinosaurs extinct? Something like, did this particular dinosaur have feathers? Did velociraptors from the movie Jurassic Park, did those have feathers? The facts that we have on hand aren't enough to answer these questions. And there are times that we're just not going to be able to find enough facts to resolve them to everybody's satisfaction. And so to get an answer to those questions, what we have to do is take the facts that we have and put them together into arguments. And what philosophy does is it gives us the tools for analyzing those arguments and figuring out which ones are better and which ones are worse. And so while we may not know for certain exactly what the right answers are, at the very least we can put ourselves on the right track towards figuring out what they are. Number three would be that there's really nothing that we do that isn't somehow related to philosophy. That's why uh, I teach or hope to teach uh, dinosaur philosophy, why I'm writing a book about dinosaur philosophy. Precisely because you can take anything that really anybody is interested in. Dinosaurs, science fiction, um, sports, education. Everything that can be of interest to somebody has some philosophical basis, whether it be in determining where dinosaurs fit into the broader tree of life, or figuring out whether or not um, a particular character in a book is truly good or truly evil, or trying to figure out if uh, doping is an acceptable way of achieving some sort of advantage in a sport. These are all questions that depend, as I said before, uh, not just on the facts, but on how you arrange them. And so it's the arguments that we derive using these facts that ultimately give us the answers to the questions that we want. So everything that um, can be of interest has some philosophical dimension. And so it's useful to study philosophy, um, not just for its own sake, but because it's the sort of thing that can really give context and, and a deeper meaning to all of our interests. 